The orders were clear, exterminate all the prisoners. With this blunt phrase, on December 13, 1937, the Japanese Imperial Army began one of the cruelest massacres in history in the Chinese city of Nanking. This event occurred within the framework of a war between China and Japan known as the Second Sino-Japanese War, which began two years before World War II, and is considered the most terrible war crime of the century. The horror was of such magnitude that specialists have come to affirm that if the hands of those killed in this massacre were joined, it would be possible to travel the distance that separates Nanking from the city of Hangzhou, equivalent to 200 kilometers. That their stacked bodies could reach the height of a 74-story building, and that their blood would weigh 1,200 tons. The worst part of that indescribable hell was suffered by the female inhabitants of Nanking. That ordeal, whose responsibility is the sole responsibility of the Japanese Imperial Army, is what we are going to tell you about in this video. Crimes against humanity are usually associated with the Third Reich, but the massacre committed by Japan in Nanking is an aberrational episode that cost the lives of more than 300,000 people. Yet this is a tragedy that has been largely omitted from the history books and, outrageously, the Japanese government has never publicly apologized for such an atrocity that took place over the course of 42 days. We are talking about the Second Sino-Japanese War, which was an invasion of Chinese territory, which began on July 7, 1937, with the support of Nazi Germany, which was about to start World War II. In this context, the campaign to conquer Nanking, at that time the capital of China, took place, in which the Japanese achieved their goal, taking the city and carrying out all kinds of atrocities with local detainees. The horror began with the order to execute the Chinese prisoners of war, with chilling textual indications of how to do it, all prisoners are to be executed. Protocol execution method, divide prisoners into groups of 12. Shoot to kill for separate. As if the directions weren't already inhumane enough, the Japanese military, completely unleashed, pushed the directives even further, entering homes, banks, and businesses. They looted everything in their path, randomly opening fire without hesitation, executing people from behind, from the front or straight to the heart. During the Japanese invasion, cruelty reached limits that were difficult to overcome, as atrocities ranging from beheading competitions with swords to the savagery of burying prisoners up to their waists to be devoured by wild dogs were committed. The civilian population, but in particular women, old women and girls, were the ones who suffered the most, since it is considered that during the attack on Nanjing one of the largest collective and systematic sexual crimes in history was carried out. It is estimated that around 80,000 women were abused by the Japanese army, to later be murdered in the most brutal ways. In Nanking, the killing of Chinese women by the Japanese army seemed like a purge plan with a clear objective. The soldiers did a door-to-door -door search to find the victims, who were taken by force. It did not matter their age or if they were pregnant, all the prisoners were killed immediately after being abused, generally by inhumane means ranging from mutilation, in which their breasts were cut off, or by stabbing them with weapons in their private parts. According to data from the investigations, during the invasion of the Japanese army, there were at least 1,000 cases of violations per night and as many during the day. Records of missionaries of the time in the territory leave chilling testimonies. There is probably no crime that has not been committed in this city today. Thirty girls were taken from the language school and from their homes yesterday afternoon, some of whom were as young as 12 years old. Also tonight, we heard a truck full of prisoners go through the door of the newspaper, in which there were at least eight or ten girls screaming for help from the back of the vehicle. This statement is from Minnie Vatran, and was taken from her personal diary on December 16, 1937. More evidence of the cruelty of the imperial troops were found in the letters that Dr. Robert O. Wilson, an American surgeon who was working in the city, sent to his family to tell of the tragedy. Let me recount some cases that occurred in the last two days. Last night, the house of one of the Chinese staff members of the university was destroyed and two of his relatives, two girls around 16 years old, were raped to death in one of the refugee camps. 
At University Middle School where there are 8,000 people, the Japanese jumped over the wall, stole food, clothes, and abused women until they were satisfied. As this testimony shows, the behavior of the Japanese soldiers did not respond to a war strategy to conquer the territory, but more to pure cruelty. According to witnesses who survived the Nankin massacre, no woman was safe from sexual exploitation. In some cases, such attacks were filmed as macabre souvenirs, and all ended with the victim being murdered. Imperial troops, moving in small numbers for freedom, continued to prowl the devastated towns, violating the women and girls, and killing anyone who tried to resist. The most ruthless and savage thing about this whole situation was that there were girls under the age of 8 and old women over 70, attacked in the most brutal way possible, showing that the Japanese soldiers had no mercy for the Chinese people. In the midst of this completely inhuman situation, it seemed impossible for anything similar to a resistance to appear, but this type of situation opens the door to unexpected characters in the story. That was the case with Chang Benhua, a resistance hero who fought against the Japanese during the Nanking Massacre. She became known through a photo in which she was portrayed shortly before she was assassinated by the Japanese army. This oriental girl has become an iconic image of bravery and resistance for the entire Chinese people, and her story is as moving as her tragic ending. Cheng Benhua was born in the small village of Gaoxiang, in the Anhui province, in the eastern part of China, in the year 1914. She grew up as a brave, intelligent and firm woman in her own convictions. Still in high school, she joined a local scout group, where she would receive strict military training that would serve her years later to fight the Japanese. In 1937, Benhua, who was only a 23-year-old girl, became an active figure in the anti-Japanese national movement, a group made up of volunteer guerrillas that would consolidate as a united army in 1936. In that same year, Chang would marry his friend, recruit and partner, Lu Zi, and both would end up joining the People's Self-Defense Force to fight against the Japanese invasion. The courage, temper and leadership skills of the young Chinese girl would end up placing her in command of some troops of her organization. Despite the efforts of Chang and his compatriots, the resistance was defeated by the Imperial Army and thousands of prisoners were taken, including Benhua and her partner. Testimonies from the resistance say that, ignoring the enemy's attempts to persuade her to surrender, Chang did not back down in the face of a much larger army which aroused the visceral hatred of the Japanese soldiers. As a consequence of her actions, she would be locked up in prison or she would go through a true ordeal. Unsurprisingly, Cheng's stay in jail was hell, as she was repeatedly abused and humiliated during her brief prisoner period. Among the acts of cruelty to which she was subjected, it stands out that she was forced to witness the execution of her companions, while she was violated by a group of Japanese soldiers. Despite everything, Chang maintained her impassive and defiant attitude, showing an iron spirit, unable to break. That's why in the photo that made her a legend, she seems to defy death with a smile, as she carries her arms crossed over her chest and her head upright to look directly at the camera without blinking. Despite her boundless courage, the girl was finally executed by bayonet in December 1938, at the young age of 24. The image of her, in which she showed a challenging and strong attitude, ended up becoming famous all over the world, being, especially for the Chinese people, an icon of patriotic value. Cheng Benhua, who faced death with a smile, will remain one of the bravest fighters in history. Her pose in that famous shot is commemorated by a 5-meter statue in Nanjing, also the site of one of the worst war crimes where 300,000 Chinese men, women and children were massacred by Japanese troops. If you found this story interesting, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any military history videos.